So there's a layer in the middle between the brand and the destination where Axiom can enable a match. And we do that compliantly in the clean room without ever sharing data between partners. Welcome to Powered by Snowflake, a series where I interview technology leaders building applications and businesses on Snowflake. I'm your host, Daniel Myers, and today I'm talking with Hannah Brown, Director of Product at Axiom. Axiom is a customer intelligence platform powered by Snowflake. Hannah, how are you today? I'm really good. How are you, Daniel? I'm doing well, and thanks for joining me here today in the studio. To really kick this off, can you tell me more about how you got involved in Axiom? And in your own words, tell me about the Axiom customer intelligence platform. Yeah, absolutely. So I came to Axiom four years ago as part of IPG's acquisition of Axiom. And at the time, Axiom started to shift and become part of the IPG network and started to do some amazing things even prior to that with putting our data, putting Axiom's data into cloud environments. So my part of the world within the identity organization is all about first party data, helping our clients utilize their first party data most effectively. So for those that aren't familiar with the term first party data, yeah. what is that? Yeah, it's data that you own. So if you're a brand, let's say Nike, your first party data is, for example, when someone goes onto nike.com and signs up for the newsletter. It's also purchases that are made in store and all other types of data that you have collected because someone has come onto a property that you own. So foot traffic in a store, for example, is also first party data. That makes a lot of sense. So. It seems like you know a platform like this to to really extract the value out of this first party data can really drive a lot of new net new revenue. Yeah, it's massive. And right now, there's a huge push in the marketing and, and, and well, advertising space and in, in, across digital spaces to remove cookies. And so if you're familiar with what a cookie is, they used to be completely uncontrolled. And now uh, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Safari have all shut down cookies. You can't th third party cookies. And Chrome is sunsetting cookies at the end of uh, 2023. So first party data is so much more important. And most brands um, have identified the demise of cookies as something that's really going to impact their business moving forward. So that's where first party data comes in and making sure that you collect the data, that you are able to share it compliantly, um, and that you utilize it to the maximum benefit for your customers and for your business. That really is a pretty big deal, sunsetting cookies across really all the major browsers. Yeah. So tell me about how Axiom is taking this first party data and doing that extraction of value. How is this in customer intelligence platform uh, bringing that value out of data? Yeah, so this product, and I can talk to you about this product specifically, this helps brands match data with other partners. And match rates is, a, is an issue in the marketing space. This helps specifically with your ability to match. And when you have first party data and without cookies and because of the need to, to share data ethically and compliantly and honor things like opt-outs or do not sell requests and things like that. That's where the management of first-party data and match rates can get tricky. In terms of Axiom as a company and first-party data, that's, that's really our bread and butter and real identity at Axiom. Our clients are half of the Fortune 100. A lot of them, we manage all of their company data and we really cut our teeth with the financial industry, which is highly regulated. Axiom is known for our ethical use of data. So coming into Snowflake, it was really important and coming into cloud, putting data in the cloud in general, it was so important to us that, that we were able to do that compliant and something that Snowflake really does for us is there's a clean room technology that underpins our app that we built on Snowflake, but also enables the ability to share compliantly. I really love the fact that you mentioned, you know, compliance uh, and ethical data sharing, right? Tell me more about how things like GDPR and, you know, California CCPA, you know, how does that uh, impact and drive uh, the, a solution like this? 
Yeah, those laws are absolutely massive. So opted in first party data, um, which is, so for example, GDPR, one of the most common things that people understand is when they go to a website, they get asked if, if your cookie can be tracked, right? And the same is happening in California where you can say no. And so that um, removes the ability for your cookie to be tracked and for that first party data to be collected. Where this comes into that is if you have, if a brand, let's say, has daniel at gmail.com, your email address, because you registered for the newsletter. And let's just continue with the Nike example. They want to reach you across the web, search social display video TV, but you've signed up to Hulu with Daniel at Yahoo, for example. There's not going to be a way to connect those dots. And that's where Axiom comes in. And that's where Axiom's over 50 years old. So there's a huge history of data and compliant data collection there. And so we have more than 10 emails per person, but we cut it off at 10 emails per person. Um, And so there's a layer in the middle between the brand and the destination where Axiom can enable a match. And we do that compliantly in the clean room without ever sharing data between partners. That's impressive. And, you know, I heard you say that you are a, uh, a provider uh, for more than 50 percent of the Fortune 100. That's yeah. that's an exciting stat. So tell me more about the growth that Axiom is having. Yeah, absolutely. And really quickly, I, I'll go back and tell you the origin story because I think it's really cool. So Axiom was founded in 1969 by Charles Ward. And the original concept for the business, the whole reason it was, and it was called Demographics originally, was to make a mailing list to support the Democratic political party, you know, in Arkansas, where the Republicans were, uh, already had something set up. So over the years, it's, the company has changed so much. In the, throughout the 90s, that's when Axiom really started to look much like it does today. Today, Axiom has 3,200 odd employees in five offices globally, and we're on track to to have 1 billion in revenue by 2027. That is really exciting. So from here, I want to see a a demo of how this matching and this customer intelligence platform works. And, And can you show me where and how Snowflake fits into the tech stack? Yeah, absolutely. This application is built on Streamlit and this will be this it's a native app. Anyone who has a Snowflake account who has data sitting in Snowflake can go into the marketplace, search for Axiom, search for it's called Match Multiplier and find this native app. So, I'm going to so it's as you can see the beauty of it is it's really really simple. I'm going to step you through, but first I want to refresh because you can see fetching audience tables. So the first thing this is going to do is bring in a list of all the tables that you have in your Snowflake account that you've given Match Multiplier permission to. And that's a really important step. Match Multiplier can't just go in and and look at your Snowflake account. There is a pre-step to this user interface where you set this up and you give permission to the tables that you want to use within this feature. Once you've done that and you come in here, all those tables are going to populate. These tables, for matching purposes, they need to have either an email, a hashed email, or a phone number in them. And that's all described in in the setup. So let's just go ahead and select loyal customers. The row count in this table will populate here so that you can verify that's the right one. Go ahead and click OK. The next thing that you'll do is select the destination. And in here is a list of anywhere you want to send that data to. And that could be to a social platform, that could be to a a TV provider, um, to display or or search providers, any tech or, or even a data onboarding company that will populate here. And you can go ahead and select the one that you want. And then you click match. And this is when, so the the Snowflake clean room right now is combining the data from the audience and from the destination that we have access to combine. And it's saying, okay, we found in this case, 167,000 matched records. Um, And that's without sharing any data between these two sides. So there was a 33% match rate. And this is this comes back to what I was saying with match rates and the importance of maximizing your first party data. A 33% match rate isn't terrible, but when cookies go away and you, if you have 
500,000 customers, you want to reach all of them. And it's really important. That's one of your only vehicles to reach them and connect with them. So you want to be able to maximize that. And so the next step is where Axiom comes in. So you go multiply. Again, the clean room is now doing, instead of a two-way join, it's doing a three-way join between Axiom's data, the partner's data, and the brand's data. And you can see in this example that uh, 278,000 records matched, a 56% match rate. So Axiom was able to add 111 odd thousand records. And if you have a conversion rate of 1% and a total customer value of $500, that's a lot of money to a business. So things like this can really move the needle. And then what happens is once you're happy with this, if you're happy with your, your audience and the destination, go ahead and hit distribute. And that will send that data down to that destination that you selected. And it's important to note that because of the technology on Snowflake, we're not actually taking data from the brand and giving it to the destination by virtue of the fact that it's a compliant clean room match, the destination and already has that information. So we're just signaling to that destination, this is the in target audience as, as it were. So there's actually no sharing of data. It's completely compliant and, and that's that. This is pretty incredible to see and incredibly valuable to literally multiply those matches. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. And and I love the fact that it's running in Streamline. Yeah. Um, you know, I know at Summit earlier this year, we mentioned, you know, the native apps uh, architecture. And you, you mentioned you're targeting that as part of Axiom's product. It really seems like that's that's one of the things that you're targeting is to go live on that marketplace. You know, tell me more about some of the exciting things that your customers have to look forward to. Yeah. And, um, and the Streamlit launch announcement at the summit was really cool. And we were actually there with you guys at Summit announcing this as yeah. part of that launch. So it was like, Snowflake's doing this amazing thing, releasing this amazing thing, and Axiom's built this awesome thing that we think is going to help both of our clients on these new using these new tools. So that was really exciting. In the immediate term, the goals for this product are to the, the number of destinations, the, the places you can push the data, that's going to have the full gambit and also the data input. So right now it's email, hashed email, phone number. Ultimately, there'll be more ways you can input that data. And then lastly, the, the type of match. So if, for example, there's a, a purchase that's at a household level, for example, groceries or an automotive purchase, you can do a, a household level match powered by Axiom's core data on household connections. And you can also do a best match, which, for example, if you have two emails, but one's your primary, a brand does, you know, has an outdated email, that can help a brand to access that primary email that someone might be using across platforms and reach them. So that's in the immediate term. In the long term, Axiom Real Identity is all about first party data. And it's so important to make that data available where people are. So without this product on Snowflake, someone who used Snowflake would have to take that data, put it into a S3 bucket or put it, drop it into an SFTP somewhere. Someone at Axiom would extract it. They do the thing, then they push it somewhere else. So this removes all of that, all of those steps. So the data sharing capabilities of Snowflake are, are amazing. And, and that's really where we're going. Currently, we manage clients' entire data on Snowflake, and we're doing more and more of those data management services. So you mentioned a few kind of key capabilities of Snowflake that enable a product like this to happen, right? You, you mentioned mm -hmm. the data sharing capabilities. You mentioned that, uh, you know, you're, you, with native apps, the data never leaves, right? The customer's environment. That's so, sometimes I, I talk to folks and they don't really realize the power of that. And uh, so that's that's really cool to hear. Based on that, right? What what are some of the the main reasons? You know, I assume data sharing and, and na the native app capability of Snowflake. But what are some of the the main reasons why you chose Snowflake to build this product on? Yeah. So infrastructure, flexibility, cost. These were all things we considered, the data sharing, technical chops, compliance, uh, also how, how much you guys are growing. You know, that's really important as well. You facilitate services for enterprise clients and so do we. So we have a lot of shared clients. So we actually did an evaluation. I think our first PO with, Snow with Snowflake was in 2017. And that was when uh, one of our big financial services clients who wanted to move to cloud 
And we did a, a huge amount of evaluation at that time. And they wanted to, to remove their capital expenditures and make them operating expenditures and just have way more flexibility. And Snowflake turned out to be the best choice for them. And we today manage their solution on Snowflake. And that's just one example of how Axiom uses Snowflake. But another example is, I think, to the data sharing point. So just to dive back a little bit, when we were on exclusively on AWS and before uh, Snowflake, the data that was moved around like all the time, it's so hard to describe trillions and trillions and trillions of records going here, going there, going just all over the place. And the people that that required to build ETLs, to make stored procedures and the cost that that was. And when you're on AWS, you can't scale your compute and storage. So it was like you had to have this much storage all the time and it was expensive. With Snowflake, it's that just evaporated. Like it's super crazy to me, like that ETL, because someone just shares you the data and it's there. That just, that whole thing and the, all the costs just evaporated and it's just super crazy and amazing. I, I totally agree. I, I think the data sharing capability of Snowflake is foundational in so many different ways, let alone from a, a technical capability, but also just like you mentioned, the the organizational and kind of the the business impact to to how you run the business, the data sharing capability makes an impact there. And so Hannah, where should folks go if they want to learn more about you and about the company? Yeah, so go to axiom.com. Um, you can also go into Snowflake Marketplace uh, and the match multiplier chiclet is available. The application is in a uh, private preview, but you can go ahead into the chiclet and submit and send an inquiry. That's exciting. Yeah. And again, thank you for joining me here today in the studio. It's been great having you. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. And thanks to everyone watching. To see more interviews like this with tech leaders building applications on Snowflake, check out our other videos on YouTube and subscribe for new episodes. My name is Daniel Myers, and this has been another episode of Powered by Snowflake.